So we started off with sodium chloride. And the first thing that we did, and it's the most important step, so get that in, I guess, when you're studying. Remember, whenever you're given a, a, um, a name, a compound, always refer to your periodic table and identify metal and non-metal. And that's the first step. Okay, so we know metal is the sodium, chloride is the non-metal. So now we go into the five step, what I like to call the five step crossover rule. The first step says, write the symbol. So what's the symbol for sodium? Na. What's the symbol for chloride? Cl. Next step says, write the charges. So if we look, refer to our periodic table, we'll notice that sodium has a plus one charge and chloride has a negative one charge. Step three of the crossover rule is pretty much where the name comes from. Cross over the charges now from the top to the bottom. So watch now how the charges move. The positive one moved down and crossed over. Okay. Step number four. We're going to remove the charges so we no longer need the negative and the positive. So we remove that. And step number five, we're going to simplify the number so you treat it like a ratio and you try to reduce it to lowest terms. One to one is already reduced to lowest terms. So we do the second part of the last part of the five-step crossover rule, and that is to simplify the numbers and to remove the ones. So we no longer need the ones. So what is the formula for sodium chloride? Well, we put it all together and it becomes NaCl. Now let's look at the um, configuration of how this ionic bond forms. So we start off with Na and Cl at, at opposite ends. We draw electron dot diagrams of both of them. So sodium has one valence electron, chlorine or chloride has seven valence electrons. Now to become stable, okay, remember that metals lose electrons, non-metals gain electrons. So that sodium is going to lose the electron, okay, to chloride. And watch that as it moved from sodium to chloride. Let's watch that one again. So we're going from sodium, this valence electron here, it's going to make its way towards the chlorine because chloride needs one more electron to become stable. Sodium needs to lose that electron to become stable. Okay, so watch it move over. <coughs> okay, now sodium lost an electron. It lost a negative. So which does it have more of? Well, it has more positives. How many more positives? It has one more positive. Now, chlorine, or should I say now chloride, because it's gained the electron, it's gained an additional negative, okay? Now, it becomes negatively charged. And as we said, well, there's opposite to attract. So the positively charged sodium attracts the negatively charged chloride, and that's how an ionic bond between sodium and chloride forms. Let's move on to our next example. Calcium oxide, same thing. First step, identify metal and non-metal. So calcium is the metal, oxide is the non-metal. Next step, we're gonna write the symbols, Ca and O. Step number two, write the charges. So you refer to your periodic table, Ca is a positive two charge, O has a negative two charge. Step number three, where the name kind of comes from, the five-step crossover rule, the crossover rule, they cross over the charges from top to bottom. Now let's watch how the charges move. Okay, they move from the top of one atom to the bottom of the other. Step number four, we're gonna remove the charges. We no longer need them when writing out our chemical formula. Step number five says, we're gonna simplify the numbers. That's the first part of the last step. And we have a ratio of 2 to 2. So 2 to 2 ratio simplifies to 1 to 1. So we write it into 1 to 1. Or we don't really need to because what, look at the final step. It says remove the 1. So we remove the 1s and the formula for calcium oxide is CaO. So let's see how this bond forms. So we start off with the uh, chemical symbol. We're going to... Uh, draw in our valence electrons. So there are two for calcium. There are six for oxygen. 
Okay, again, we want to remember that metals lose electrons, non-metals gain. So calcium is a metal. Calcium has a tendency to lose those two electrons. Whom is it going to lose to? Well, it's going to lose to oxygen because non-metals gain those electrons. So let's watch these electrons as they get lost from calcium and how oxygen gains them. So oxygen gained two electrons. Calcium lost two electrons. Because calcium lost two electrons, it becomes positively charged. But how many negatives did it lose? It lost two of them. So which means it has a surplus of two protons. So positively charged, plus two. Oxygen picked up two negatives. So it picked up now, it's got a surplus of two electrons. So meaning it's negative two. And again, since they are oppositely charged, they attract one another. As we said, opposites attract. Okay, let's look at our next example. Magnesium chloride. Again, first step before you do anything. Identify metal, non-metal. Magnesium is the metal. Chloride is the non-metal. So now we can go on and use the five-step crossover rule. Now, if you do not find a metal and non-metal, if the two happen to be non-metals, you cannot use the five-step crossover rule. Okay, the five-step crossover rule is only for metal and non-metal. So now we can start with the five-step crossover rule. So we're going to write the symbols, Mg and Cl. Step two, we're going to write the charges. So the charge for magnesium, plus two. The charge for chloride, negative one. Step three, we're going to cross over the charges from top to bottom. So from top to bottom, top to bottom. Step four, we're going to remove the charges. Step five, the first part says to simplify the numbers. We cannot simplify it because it's already in lowest terms, one to two. So now the next, the last part of the final step is to remove the one. So we're going to remove that one. And now the formula for magnesium chloride is MgCl2. Now let's look at uh, how that bond is, is arranged. So we draw in magnesium and magnesium has two valence electrons. Chloride has seven valence electrons. Magnesium must lose two electrons. Chloride can only pick up how many electrons? It can only pick up one electron. So, magne so magnesium is going to lose one electron to the chlorine, and now chlorine becomes chloride. Okay, so when magnesium lost the electron, it becomes positive one. Okay, when chloride picked up that electron, it become, became negative one. But the problem is magnesium still has one more electron. Okay, it still has that one more electron. And so we need to get rid of that one electron. And where is it going to get rid of it? Chlorine cannot pick up. It's, it's full. It cannot fit more than eight. So what's going to happen is, well, we need another chlorine. So that electron is going to move over to another chlorine. And the chlorine now becomes negatively negative one. But watch the magnesium. The magnesium's finally lost the two electrons that it wanted to get rid of. And now magnesium is positive to exactly the same charge that you find in your periodic table. And there is the formula, MgCl2. Uh, last example, calcium phosphide. So same thing. We're going to identify metal, non-metal. Calcium is the metal, phosphide, non-metal. Write the symbols, Ca and P. Step two, we're going to write the charges, plus two, pl minus three. Step three, we're going to cross over the charges from top to bottom. Watch how they move. Okay. Step number four, we're going to remove the charges. So say bye-bye to the charges. And finally, the last step says, simplify the numbers, remove the ones. Three to two is already in lowest terms. We cannot reduce it. Are there any ones? There are no ones. So we cannot remove any ones. So the formula is as is, CA3P2.